Oh, come on. Ah. Ah. It's muted. Oh my gosh. This thing. Look, you know, I had to I had to, you know, I had to do it. I had to at least do it because it's been it's been a little while. It's been like what? Uh 2 weeks or so. So uh, we, we got it. We got it. I got to pay the IT guys, uh, get them out here, but we are back. We are back. <laughs> Why do you always return? Uh, or always mute when I return? It's your fault, Lewis. Get out of here. Go. Um, anyway, we are back. I've got no notes. I have no idea what's going on. It's been a, a few weeks now. Uh, there's a lot of Jurassic to talk about and, uh, I'm not, I'm fully unprepared. I am fully unprepared as always. Um, I feel like I have like no time to like look into this stuff anymore. I don't know about you guys, but uh, time has been like dwindling recently. So there's a lot of news to discuss tonight. Thank you, Caleb. Thank you. Uh, there's a lot of news to discuss tonight. We've got some Beyond the Gates stuff. We'll talk about those. We've got uh, Camp Cretaceous uh, hidden something or other. What was it called? Hidden... I don't remember hidden world, hidden adventure. <laughs> I I, I uh, took no notes, like I said, hidden adventure, um, and then also Jurassic World aftermath. Uh, yeah, that's the name, right? Uh, it's coming to the Switch, so we'll talk about that. Um, but yes, uh, there is a, a lot of stuff to discuss. But uh, as always, uh, let's say hi to people in the chat room because uh, we can do it now that the the. You know, it's unmuted. The mic is unmuted. It's been a while, Lewis. I know I said get out of here, but glad to have you. Uh, we've got Jared here. What's up, Jared? We got Caleb here. We've got Nikolai here. Uh, we got <laughs> we got Dodgson here. I don't know what you're talking about here. It's that time of year. I don't know why. What what is what time? We've got March here. Uh, oh, it's oh, it's that time of year. Is is what you're saying? You're gonna have to vote to get me to be Brad X. See, here's the thing. I just got finished saying I have no time, right? So, I don't I don't know. I, when is that? When is Halloween? I took my glasses off. Now I can't see. Uh, give me a second here. I can't find my calendar. <laughs> Let me put my glasses back on. All right, there it is. Oh, wow. I literally saw it right away when I put my glasses on. <laughs> uh, so Halloween. Oh, actually, if we were going to do it, it would be next week. I don't know. I'll have to see what I can scrounge up, but I don't think there's any possibility of me doing a Brad X costume. Um, unless uh, Cretaceous Dave so happened to print one, like a, a full body one that I can like put on my head and wear, uh, then probably not. And we'll see. I don't know what we're going to do. Um, so far behind. I don't even know what we're doing for the Halloween episode this year. It is just, it's rough. We are, we are like, I, I am not even doing the full amount of episodes and it's still rough. Uh, but anyway, let's see what else we got here. <laughs> We've got a, a muted mic. Uh, let's see. We've got Christopher Gaming here. What's up? We've got Jurassic Clark here. What's going on? Got Andy Sukas, what's up? How you doing? Yeah, no, obviously. Obviously it's on the 31st. I just didn't know when the day that we stream would be in relation to the 31st. The 31st is a Monday, so we would stream on the 26th next week, next Wednesday. So I don't know. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I'll let you know. I'll let you know. But uh, let's go over to the website real quick. Do I remember how to do any of this stuff? I don't know. Uh, here we are at JurassicParkPodcast.com. If you did not know, uh, this past episode that we released was Dino DNA with Steve Brasati talking about Jurassic World Dominion. Do you know Steve? Steve's the paleontology consultant on Jurassic World Dominion. You know, the one who helped out, you know, make sure that everything looked good. You know, it was like part of the the right time periods, I guess, and things like that. I don't know anything about dinosaurs. But uh, <laughs> but uh, Connor was kind enough. Connor from uh, D Dino DNA was kind enough to have Steve Rosati on the episode. And then we also had Dakota Morgan 
uh, with another episode of The Hatchery talking about the Pachycephalosaurus from The Lost World. So it was a big episode. Definitely go check out that episode. You can find it over on JurassicParkPodcast.com or Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, uh, Audible, anywhere else that you listen to podcasts, wherever that may be, you can check it out. Um, But we are here to talk about some Jurassic stuff. So let's dive right into it because we got a lot to discuss. So then here's the thing. Like I said, I didn't prepare. I have no notes. Um, and I really don't have a lot of time to look into things all that much. Uh, you know, I was just on vacation. And then we have, like, kids' sports and work and all kinds of stuff. And it's it's a lot. So this is the first time that I'm looking into a lot of this stuff with you. Uh, and that happens often here. That happens often. So let's take a look at the first thing. Beyond the gates. We're going to talk beyond the gates here. Um, so... Let's see. Uh, let's go over to the site, Target, target.com. And uh, let's see. Here is the new stuff down here somewhere. There it is. The Ankylosaurus from JP3 and this uh, Geosternbergia uh, that was, you know, kind of it's model it, it's the thing at the end of the lost world is kind of modeled after this but the, this is like i i don't know it, it's very cool i i like that uh the geo sternberg was included but i don't here's the thing i knew these guys were coming right i, I knew they were coming oh, my glasses are still like all messed up um i knew these two were were on the way But, I don't know. I was more hyped about the Geosternbergia. And, and I still like I still like that one more than the Yankee. But, I gotta say, this is like a very underwhelming month for me. Uh, for these two figures. I don't know. Yeah, it, it just feels a little underwhelming for me. I, I'm not sure how everybody feels. I, I have seen a few reactions. Some people have been saying that they really dig them. Um, I think they, I think they look fine. They look fine. We'll take another look at them. And uh, you know, everybody at Jurassic Outpost has a, they have a nice video there where you can check it out and look at some really high detail stuff. And I think Chris has been posting some pictures, and Jurassic Out- Outpost have been posting some pictures uh, from the studio there, and they look nice. They look like nice figures. Um, I'm just not so sure from for myself personally, um, and I, this is kind of the approach that I've been taking a lot recently is picking and choosing um, when it comes to the the latest Mattel batches. I think um, not so much. I haven't really been picking and choosing when it comes to the Hammond collection, but pretty much everything else. You know, like I'll I'll pick up Maisie because I, I got Maisie over there. I have not opened it yet. Um, Maisie with the Lysosaurus and and Beta. Um, But I won't pick up, you know, I don't know, something like Tarbosaurus. I know that was a little while back, but, you know, I'll pick and choose what I want. Um, I've been pretty strict on getting the Hammond collection, but this time I I have not pre-ordered these yet. Uh, I haven't been totally totally sold yet. Um, It's just kind of underwhelming for me. I don't know. I don't know. Let's take a look, closer look here, because I want to get into the details a little bit. I'm going to bring my iPad a little bit closer to me so I can see it for once. Uh, (laughs) Look at this. I'm just going to hold it up here and just get a closer look. All right. So we have the Ankylosaurus here. Still still available. So if I change my mind in the middle of this recording or after this recording, I can still get it. Um, But $21.99, you can get this one. Oh, here we go again. Not knowing how to zoom on this iPad. I mean, yeah. I feel like Larry David when it comes to dinosaurs and toys that I'm I don't want. I'm like, eh, I don't, eh, you know. Um, the colors, pretty. Um, I, look, I guess this is obviously modeled off of uh, Jurassic Park three, right? This is a Jurassic Park three Ankylosaurus. I have no special attachment to. 
most dinosaurs from that movie, Spinosaurus and the male Velociraptors. All about that. Everything else, I'm kind of just like, eh, whatever, whatever. It looks fine. Um, I think it saw, I saw somewhere that it had like 19 points of articulation or something like that. Yeah, right here, deluxe articulation, 19 movable joints, triple articulated legs, movable neck and jaw, multi-jointed tail, ready for dramatic display poses, 11 and a half inches long, 30th anniversary of Jurassic Park. I don't get it. But uh, yeah, JP3. I think for me, there's a weirdness for me. I mean, that pose, that looks really nice. I, I like that. That pose is, is pretty good. Um, but it doesn't look enough better to me than like the regular Ankylosaurus or like Bumpy or something like that. Um, do I, I don't even know if I have one around. No, that's how, that's how, uh, you know, that goes to show you, that's how, uh, you know, how fun it is for me to have the Ankylosaurus out on the shelf is I don't even have it out here. I don't have any of them and I have a few, um, but for me, it's just a little okay. It looks okay. I, I do like how, how those look, those like spikes there. That looks like some nice paint right there. But everything else just looks too much like the, the core line. And the articulation is, is not doing it for me, to be honest. Like, I don't really care too much about a ton of articulation. Um, that box is so weird. Like the way that this, this just looks like it's like flattened in there. It just, it's roadkill. Road cut, road, I was trying to think of ankylosaurus, roadkill, roadkillosaurus. Um, yeah, it's fine. It looks fine. Can't, how many more pictures are there? Was that it? That was it. Okay. It looks fine. We'll see. I don't know that I'm going to change my mind, but I might feel the pressure at some point. I might feel the pressure. Um, and then we also have, they didn't paint the toenails. Yeah. Oh my God. Are you serious? They did not paint them on the Triceratops. Yeah. So the trike did not get, get any paint down there either. Yeah. I don't know. The, the paint job just doesn't look good enough for me. So I don't know. Other than these spikes, that is the only thing I think that looks like impressive on this figure. Like those look real good. But for $21.99, I was like a little hesitant. Then we also have the Geo Sternbergia. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, you know, it's a flying one. Let's see what we got here. Deluxe articulation, 13 movable joints, two wired posable wings. Neck, jaw, triple jointed legs that can pick up and carry a human. Can it? Authentic design. Jurassic Park accurate details. Lost World. Jurassic Park Geosternbergia. Yeah. Okay. So let's take a look. I like some of the colors there. That's a nice looking pose. That looks good. The beak looks pretty nice. Claws are painted. 
It's a little generic with the fact that the wings and, and just like that's whatever you call that that rigid part along the, the wing it's just all like one color i know there's a, a secondary like brown in there but um i, I don't know to me it's just, it's, a, it's another one that's like okay and i would get it for the you know the fact that i think it was what was it in like concept art or something like that Um, and how much was that one again? Twenty one ninety nine again. Uh, so to me, I have not been a huge fan of getting the flying dinosaurs. So it's a tough one for me because what do I have? I've got, I do have, you know, the Dimetrodon, no, Dimorphodon, sorry, <laughs> wrong thing. Uh, leading edge of the wing with the, the I said rigid like the rigid part like the hard I'm like pointing at my screen like as if you could see it but like this part here <laughs> wait oh my gosh nope let's go back to the picture for a second come on oh come on let's zoom will you zoom oh my gosh nope it won't zoom. Why won't it zoom anymore? Uh, right, so let's see. Like this, like that part, like that bony part, or whatever that is. Um, and uh, we all know how these feel. Like it's it's going to be pretty identical to the um, the amber collection uh, pteranodon from JP3. And like that one's just like fine. It looks good. Like that one's got a good paint job. I just again, it's like another one that I don't necessarily care for. Um, and I really don't. I don't really get any of the pteranodons. I don't buy any of them personally. Um, I've gotten two uh, Quetzalcoatlus, and I've got a few Dimorphodons, uh, Amber Collection, and some of the regular core ones. But outside of that, I'm not a huge fan of like the, the flying creatures for, you know, buying for toy purposes because they pose weird, you know, like this only has one pose. Like I know that this has like this pose, but it's all weird. And it's like, it's a little wonky. Like I have mine in there posed just like this, my Pteranodon from JP3. And it's just like a little bendy and weird. And I don't know, not, not totally sold on this batch here. I, I wish I was, but I might end up picking up the Geo Sternberg, yeah, and just putting it on a stand of some sort. You have to get a stand, I guess. Um, but I'm not totally sold just yet. So we'll see. So what is everybody else thinking about? Um, the, uh, the figures there. Trying to bring up something right here. Just give me a second. All right, I'm gonna go back. Come on. What? So you're gonna make me scroll forever to find this? Ay ay ay. See if they have it up here. No. Come on. Bear with me. Here we go. I was trying to like literally go to YouTube, which is such a feature that I hate about YouTube. Sorry, we're streaming here. But um, when you search for like, you wanna look for a channel. They don't make it very easy to find a channel. You have to go through a bunch of things. You gotta scroll, you gotta click some stuff just to find a, a channel, just to go and look at the pictures uh, that are in a video. Uh, let's see, I wanted to go into 
here, go back over here real quick, just to look at the uh, Beyond the Gates video here on YouTube. Oh my gosh. Okay, there's the, why is this so dark? I mean, hey, I guess it's not dark enough of a figure because I literally couldn't see anything in that last scene. Oh, there we go. Very dark. I think like it needs like a a dirty wash all over that figure to even like come close. Because like if you look, that underside is much darker than whatever is on this figure. See, I think if we're if we're going for the collector line, I don't want it to just look like the other Ankylosaurus, just with more posability. I don't I don't care about that personally. Uh, let's go. What is this? Uh, some more pictures. Um, go through. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's the concept art piece there. Um, yeah, I remember that. Okay. There we go. Look at that. That's pretty cool. But to me, that just looks like far better. Uh, let's see. Oh, that looks so goofy now. Boy, that looks so nice. You know, for me, I wonder if a lot of it is like this orange color. Like, I feel like that color gets put on a lot of figures and I'm not totally sold on it. Like, I don't know. But I wanna see what everybody else is thinking about, um, about these figures. So let's go over to the chat again. Um, Lewis says, the HC collections are HC collections. Hammond collection collections are really cool to me, but both of them aren't 100% screen accurate, especially the Yankee, but I love them so much. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. You, I mean, that's fine. If you love these, no, I'm, I don't care. Like, that's cool. Uh, it's just not for me. Um, yeah, I think, I, I don't know if I put this up there before, but uh, Geo Sternberg and Anky, Anky, I can't say this, Ankylosaurus, eight out of tens. Okay. really wish they could fix how the wings fold for the Geo Sternbergia. Yeah, exactly. Like, to me, that is a, a bummer that, like, you bend them, but then they just look like bent wings. It just, it's weird. Um, and you can never get it the right... Because when you look at the JP3 Pteranodon and the way that that thing is, like, it's got its arms... <laughs> I can't do the pose. But uh, got its wings up, you know, in that V or W shape or whatever... It's really like, just like, boom, boom. It looks like a very fine W. <laughs> and uh, I love, I just love the way that it looks. But when you do it the, uh, with these guys, it's like these bendy things that just look kind of silly. Um, March says, like it. Not sure if I'm going to pick it as I'm not fond of the articulated figures. Um, it's still a promo picture. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's why I wanted, I wanted to go, actually, did I show, I didn't really show, yeah, actually, we did show one of them. Let's take a, let's take another look. I mean, this looks just like it, like. It looks good. I, I think that looks kind of good there. But, of course, it's just that lighting and everything. Uh, let's see. But, oh, yeah. Look at that mushy wing. Like, I'm not a fan of that. It would have to be the spread out pose. Um, Anki looks pretty on par with what we saw in those promo pictures. And so does that one. I just think it's maybe less orange and more yellowy. So, yeah. Uh, oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm not even showing that video to you. Uh, there it is. Um, super bendy arms and... Uh, the Anki looks, yeah, pretty much the same, and not painted on the the the, the claws there on the feet. Um, it's so weird. Like, why? Who chooses this? Because like, why is the claws painted? Why are the claws painted on the Geosternbergia, but not the Ankylosaurus? Like, who who decides? 
because I had to turn around and look at the Hammond collection behind me, and most of them have it. T-Rex, Baryonyx, uh, Parasaurolophus, but not the Triceratops. I, I don't. I still haven't opened. Oh, do I? Ha oh, that's a that's the uh, Dilophosaurus. I don't know if that one ha has it or not. Uh, Raptor does. Um, yeah, I haven't opened. I haven't opened Poopan's Ellie or Dilophosaurus. Must buy. And I think you were talking about the Geo Sternberg, yeah. <laughs> what am I doing? I don't have the game on. Why well, I got to put this game on? I'm sorry. Um, baseball fan here, guys. I got to I gotta see what's going on with the Yankees. Um, still one-to-one. -one. All right, so this is this is the big point for me. So right now I'm I'm starting to feel. Um, well, let me bring that back up again. I'm starting to feel a little like leery of the Hammond collection, just because I don't feel like they are different, or they're I, I don't feel like they're different enough to be these collector's pieces. And to be a separate line, I don't know. It to me, it's just, it's weird. It's a weird feeling right now. Um, Nikolai feels like the Hammond collection should look and feel different from the regular figures. I agree. I totally agree. Um, I feel like there's just a weird feeling altogether with um, stuff getting canceled on third-party websites and the UK really getting shafted again with a lot of these figures. Um, Hammond collection just in general being hard to find for some people um but and then and then you add on top of that the fact that the stuff doesn't necessarily represent what we see on the film um or you, the sculpt's a little off or whatever I mean you know it's a there's a multitude of things um but I just I'm I'm wondering how we got here and why are we trying to make something that's just adjacent to the other line and not different enough. Cutting costs on the premium line is very annoying because they raised, yeah, raised the prices too. Yeah, I, I know. That, that I did see that some of the prices went up. Um, yeah, yeah. Keys here thinks... Uh, great idea but mattel seems to just use the same mainline model and add articulation yeah that does seem to be happening with some of these figures we've seen that before right with the the amber collection i always just felt like things were just either upscaled downscaled like to a certain you know size or whatever and i'm not getting enough difference and i've said this about the humans too that i'm like literally the only thing that feels different is that there's two joints in the knee instead of one you know, in these human figures. And I'm like, why are we doing this again? Why are we back here, back at square one? Um, also, another thing for me is like, there are so many figures that could be done. Why are we here? Like, why are we on the JP3 and Kylosaurus? What is up with that neck, by the way? What is happening there? I feel like it's like missing plastic. Is it just a shadow? Hey, there's Chris. What's up, Chris? Uh, <laughs> but um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. I was saying these. How do we get to JP3 and Kylosaurus, and then also a bird that's not in any of the movies. <laughs> like, I don't understand why this is here so far. Like, why have we not gotten to other figures, other humans, 
Jurassic fan here says, make make a woo. Like, why have we got Geosternbergia before a character that has been in four, four out of six movies? Um, wild. Just wild to me. But, um, and then we also know that, like, at some point, Concavenator is getting made. And it's like, again, and I, I look here, I appreciate, I really do appreciate things getting made that are not part of the franchise, that are just franchise adjacent, really. Like, this is, this was, you know, close to being a part of the film. The Concavenator is a model in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom in the, you know, in the whatever, the, the, the house, the, the museum part of the house, the Lockwood Manor. But it's not actually in the movies or anything. So why is that getting one before, you know, anything? What do we have left from Jurassic Park? Nothing, right? I think they've... I mean, if we're going to do a Brachiosaurus, I, I don't think so, but... Um, I mean, they pretty much handled it, right? I don't think there's anything missing, is there? But we could move on to the Lost World, and there's a plethora of dinosaurs to use from the Lost World. Um, I, this one just, to me, just doesn't make enough of an impact. Um, yeah. I feel like you should, like, save JP3 for, like, last. <laughs> but we're going to get a lot of stuff from JP3, it seems like. I don't know. Um, I just wish that there were other things made prior to things that are not part of the films. Um, yeah, look here. I, I didn't, I wasn't going to mention it, but we have a Parasaurolophus, so I'm like going to let it slide that we, you know, they didn't give us, it was like a greener one or something like that in, in Jurassic Park, I think. Um, but, uh, at least we have a Parasaurolophus. So that's why I'm like, let's let that slide. Um, but, uh, yeah, there are things that we could certainly use ahead of. Like I would, I would save on like a different colored Parasaurolophus until like later, later down the line, because like, first off, it's so far in the distance, and like really not a huge part of that movie. Um, same with the Sankylosaurus. I'm like, it's in like a scene. There's so many things in JP3 that could have used a Hammond collection figure prior to this, but here we are. Uh, is is my Mattel ideas legit for Mattel? Is it only for U.S. citizens? Not sure what you mean by that first part. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess so. Like, I don't know. I see. I'm not fully versed on all of the uh, cancellations and everything. Um, but yeah, it's it's weird. All the stuff getting canceled. It just makes it like a little sour for everybody, right? Everybody's feeling a little bit sour about the line. And then also just about Mattel, about Target and these exclusives. Um, it's a shame that these figures aren't getting, you know, out there more in the world. Um, I, I, I was just at Universal Studios in Orlando and they have the they have the Amber collection. Oh, no, not the Amber collection. They might have some Amber collection. But they have the Ham the Hammond collection in the stores there. Uh, you check out the Jurassic stores or just the main stores. There's uh, a bunch of Mattel figures and some other random stuff. And then there's always a Hammond collection figure. So uh, they they've got them in the parks. If you can't find them anywhere else, and if you're traveling from out of the country, you're going to Universal, you can pick it up there for an exorbitant amount of money. Like way too much money. They're double the price. So... But I don't know if you have no other shot. I, you know, if you can't get over to Target or something. But um, it's weird. It is so weird. I wish we had a better answer for all this happening with the uh, line cancel cancellations and and all that weird stuff. I know recently we had the cancellation of, you know, everybody was freaking out about Owen being canceled with the Paris or Um and again, that made its way into Target. So it's like it gets canceled on these other websites, but then it makes its way into Target. 
Target is not worldwide, so it's tough. They're triple. Yeah, they might be. Um, I saw something in there. I think it was um, like 40 bucks. I think it was like the Paris or Olifus or something. Um, so, you know, kind of like double what these are. Yeah, and you just, yeah, I have an annual pass as well, and the prices are so, the price for the annual pass is great. <laughs> the price for the merchandise in the stores, horrible, horrible. It's because mo most of their merch is stuff that is, like, readily available in other places. So it's just, like, imported into their stores and then boosted. Like, you can you can get a Snap Squad. There's Snap Squad figures that are still in, in Universal that I don't have. And I love I love the Snap Squad. They don't even make them anymore. They make those other weird things that are not the Snap Squad. Um, and I was like, I really want these, but I'm not paying eighteen dollars for one Snap Squad. Just wild, wild. I can't believe a single Snap Squad figure is eighteen dollars. Just horrible. Yeah, and that's the thing is any of the merch that is like like this, like this thing was made there and it was like 20 bucks. Like, okay, that's that's reasonable for a cup, I think. Um and a handful of the, the actual real merch that is made there. Like I got a bunch of Horror Nights merch and stuff, and that's a like good price for for most of that stuff. But yeah, so that is the Hammond Collection stuff. Any uh, final thoughts? Anybody have any final thoughts on Hammond Collection Beyond the Gates stuff before we move on here? Um, let's see. Let's go back to the page just for a second. Y'all get your free NFT? Because I know a lot of people are blaming uh, the downfall of this line on nfts i don't know i'm not exactly sure the correlation there but who knows you never know so i think i think we are winding down on the beyond the gate season two right is this the last one coming up By the way, I was not saying buy an get an NFT. I was absolutely not saying that. That's garbage. Don't do it. Um, but one more legacy exclusive item. What is it? Do we know what it is? I'm I'm blanking on what it uh, what it could be. Um, legacy collection. Legacy collection has been hit or miss, right? I don't know. Yeah, we've gotten the Lex figure. That was a Hammond. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Legacy collection in that, that pack with Tim. Um, the Sorna tracker vehicle. Sarah Harding. So do you think we're going to like a different movie? Or are we going to go to JP3? Um, I 
Black JP30 says, uh, my son's birthday's coming up and he's a big JP fan. What should I get him from Mattel? Have any ideas? Yeah, I do. Uh, uh, let's see. Um, let's see where I can, if I can find it here. Take a look here, see what we can see. This is what I think you should be getting. This. Now that, that is a toy. That's what you need to get. If you don't have that already for your kid, get that. It is incredibly amazing. Um, I have it over here. It looks tiny over there. Ah, oh no, knocking over stuff from other shelves. But it's not, it is just incredibly huge. <laughs> just incredible, like this is unbelievable. Like why? Why is this so big? <laughs> like, I, I could like go like all the way across the room. Thing is unbelievably huge. Ah, I have to like lay it down. Just lay down. Whew. And now I'm sweating because that thing was way too heavy. Um, yeah, Dreadnought is absolutely the 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 way to go. Sixty sixty nine dollars. Um, you might be able to find some. Yeah, there's actually if you look on on Target.com, you can see right here. Just for you, save 25% on one toy. So, sign in, I have to sign in. But take 25% off of that price right there. And there you go. It's amazing, it's incredible. It's, it's one of the coolest things. Oh, is it 25? No, it says 25%. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't know what uh, what could be the next one. I'm not sure. I hope it's something big. I, I can't imagine it would be something small, right? Like... Like a JP3 Velociraptor or something like that, but for the Legacy Collection, like, so unfulfilling. I don't know what would be the next thing. I'm not too sure. But anyway, let's move on to our next thing, which is gonna be Camp Cretaceous, Hidden Adventure. So, oh no. Home run. Come on. Sorry, I'm watching this game at the same time as doing this. All right, but let's go over to YouTube. Take that down for a second, and we're going to go here. Get ready. Is that like an attraction or something? To revisit the island for the first ever Camp Cretaceous interactive episode. What are we waiting for? Here we go. Experience the island like never before. I gotta get out of here. Find a tree. Find her tree. Ah! You choose the adventure. We don't have time to find another way. No, we need to retrace our steps. You try to survive. 2005. 2015. It's 2974. What do we do? Run! No risk, no reward. But we've survived. Isn't that reward enough? 
you came so far. You should trust your gut. As always, the choice is yours. What's it gonna be? <laughs> Get into the action with Camp Cretaceous Hidden Adventure on Netflix. You came so far. Came so My God, are you kidding me? How did this get muted? How did that get muted? Uh, how did that get muted? I have no idea how that even got muted. I'm trying to think. Nope, don't remember. I don't think I hit it. Did I hit it? Play the tape. Roll the tape back. Um, yeah, whatever. Maybe YouTube... Let's say. No, because it was muted, like on my mic. Whatever. Um, start. Yeah, let's start over. Let's start the whole thing over. Let's just go back to the beginning. Let's Welcome everybody. It's me. I'm actually. Yeah, I know. It was muted. I know. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, let's go back over here. It, you know, who knows? This uh, this looks fun, though. I am ex excited to see what happens in this. Um, Tarbosaur is like, oh, oh, no. Oh, no. It knocks the coaster off the track. Hey, guys, I know I was muted. All right. <laughs> This that last time, not the time before that. I don't know what happened there, um, but uh, but yeah, Tarbosaurus knocks this coaster off the track. I hope it knocks it off without them in it because that's like super dangerous. <laughs> Let's see, when is this coming? This is like November, like it's coming up soon, right? November fifteenth. Um. Got a compi. Is this their camp? What is this spot? Oh, I don't know where that is. Yeah, so here's one of those things here. 
This makes me feel like um, like Ian Malcolm, you know, like in in Dominion, he has to put in the keypad number and get the right one. So that's pretty cool. I like that. I like you have a few options to choose from there. That'll be cool. We should try to do like some of these together or something like that. Climb down, jump into a tree. Because you know we got to go through this multiple times, right? We've got to click like all the options. Sometimes when you do these, um, you know, you do the option and then it like ends the story. So that's pretty interesting, like to see if there's like some sort of end, uh, if there's, you know, a way to continue on a different path, what happens. Um I don't think that means you can kill the kids in this, but I would I would probably assume that like if if you jump, say if you click jump into tree, maybe that's the wrong move, and I, I could I could foresee like the kids being like, all right, jump, and then they jump, and all you hear is just like, ah! and then it cuts off, and it's like start over. Um, <laughs> I could see something like that happening. I've done a few of these. I did, you know, they had that big one. Was it Black Mirror or something like that? Um, I've done, there was like a Kimmy Schmidt one, the advent, whatever that show was, The Adventures of Kimmy Schmidt or something. Um, and then I've done, there's a Minecraft one, which is like, I did that one for a long time with my son. And it was like a l super long story. Um, but pretty fun, pretty fun, and then pretty dramatic and, like, emotional, too. I was like, are you kidding me with some of these choices? Um, but, yeah, that was pretty cool. So I'm excited to see this. We've, we've kind of known that this has been coming for a while. There's been, like, minimal reporting on it, uh, mostly just, like, you know, some promotional stuff leaking out. But we haven't really talked about it outside of, like, an episode or two, uh, maybe a live stream or two. Um, but it's good to finally have some more Camp Cretaceous out here. Now, I will say, like, I wonder what this means for the future, you know, of Camp Cretaceous. Um, because Paul McHale Williams, who plays Darius, I believe Paul had said on, like, Instagram or something, like, the first choose your own adventure or something like that. What was the, I don't remember what the exact line was. Um... Let's see. Um, all right, here is the page. It says, I'm super happy to announce that the first interactive episode of Camp Cretate. Yeah, it's like, it's a weird, there's like a typo here, though. I'm super happy to announce that the first interactive episode of Camp Cretaceous. So could there be more? Is there maybe more on the way at some point? That could be cool. Um, some sort of ongoing, you know, uh, storyline. Because, look, we have, like, months worth of untouched time, you know, in between seasons and stuff. Um, so it, it could be pretty cool to see what happens in that time frame. You know, there's there's so much room for them to explore. They didn't just sit there and build their canopy, you know, that whole several months. They went and explored the island, and I'm... I'm pretty excited to see where they go and uh, and what adventures they go on. So they get to see Mr. DNA out there somewhere uh, and some maybe some new dinosaurs, which don't appear in later episodes. So I wonder what's going on there. We'll see. But uh, yeah, this is pretty cool. Pretty exciting. Uh, finally coming up in a few weeks here. We got we got a little bit more time. I don't I, I don't know. I've you know, I've previously have gotten all episodes of Camp Cretaceous early but I don't know what that means for a choose your own adventure episode like will there be a review copy or a review version or something like that I don't know that'll be interesting uh, we'll see I'll keep you up to date on that but um, I I'm not watching another trailer I don't care if there's more Tarbo to be honest uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, anyway, let's move on to another, our, our next thing, our final thing here. 
and it's going to be Jurassic World Aftermath on Nintendo Switch. Let's take a quick look at this one. Let's go back over here. Somehow I'll probably mute myself. Uh, what was I doing? Oh, yeah. Got to turn this down. And then we'll go here and press play. Now, this game, uh, previously on the Oculus... Uh, Oculus? Why did I say Oculus? Now, this is, it says Aftermath Collection, so that's cool. Um... There you go, November 10th. So it was, this was great because like, I was like wondering if anything bigger would happen. Oh, we've gotten little bits of information trickle out recently regarding, you know, maybe the franchise continuing in a way or something like that. Um, you know, then there, there was like stuff with, Bryce and DeWanda Wise, and then there was stuff with Colin saying that they're not done yet, that there's maybe more to be to more stories to be told, or whatever he has said. And then, like, we got this big drop the other day about Aftermath and the Camp Cretaceous thing, and uh, that came all in the same day, and I was like, oh, maybe we're in for another big day here. Maybe there's something fun to come. Um, but these were the only two drops, so that was good. Maybe they're saving more. And hey, look, we got... Uh, you know, beyond the gates today, but, uh, November 10th. And then a few days later, five days later, we're going to get the hidden adventure for camp Cretaceous. So big time. It's a big time, uh, coming up here in November for Jurassic. So that's cool. Coming to the switch. That'll be interesting. Um, I have not played a, like a ported over, uh, actually I have actually, that's right. I have, I was going to say, I haven't played a like a, a VR game in like a standard depth, you know, on a, on a regular system. I played the Star Wars Squadrons, I think was a VR game that was just on PlayStation or whatever that you could just buy it and play it. Um, and that was, that was great. That was a lot of fun. Um, so hopefully this will be good. Hopefully the controls will be fine. Um, I'm, I'm assuming they will be perfectly fine. I see no reason why this won't succeed as a, uh, as just a Switch game. I'm actually pretty hyped for it, you know, to actually get a release where uh, way more people have the chance to play this now. I think that's going to be really cool. Let me bring the music back up here. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be awesome because so few amount of people had the chance to play it on the Oculus um, that I think this will, you know, open it up to like a huge audience to be able to play on the Switch and uh, get a glimpse at what else is happening on the island and learn a little bit about Blue, learn a little bit about Dr. Wu, um, and just the island itself. There's a lot of really cool stuff in this uh, in this game. I, I really enjoyed it. We haven't, like, gotten too deep into it. You know, we kind of skimmed over this whole thing. I've talked about it a little bit here and there. Maybe it's time. Maybe it's time uh, coming up here. We'll see. Now I'm like, my gears are spinning. Maybe I should like throw something in. I mean, we have episodes booked out until like February, so I don't know if we're going to hit the November 10th time frame, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe we have to do a bonus episode. Um, but uh, yeah, this is a fun game. Very excited for people to get a chance to play it uh, in a wider release on the Switch on November 10th. That is pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah. I, have, I think that'll be really exciting and really cool to see. But that is all that we have for you guys this week. That's everything. Gotta watch this game. I'm watching a baseball game down here. Popped it up. Come on. Oh, somebody call it. Somebody call it. Nobody's calling it. All right. Um, <laughs> um, but anyway, that's all we got for you. Uh, sorry, I muted myself a few times there. Uh, it, we're just coming back. Maybe next week I won't. Who knows? We'll see. Probably will. But uh, let's go back to the the um, promotional stuff here. We've got JurassicParkPodcast.com. Remember, Steve Versati was on our most recent episode. 
the paleontology uh, consultant on Jurassic World Dominion. So if you liked what you saw there, if you didn't like what you see there, listen, see what Steve Versati has to talk about, um, and uh, hear him like reaffirm you know, all the processes that went into making something like Jurassic World Dominion with the different dinosaurs. Uh, and Connor did a beautiful job talking with him, so definitely go check out that episode. And also, Dakota Morgan has an episode of The Hatchery in there as well. So definitely check that out where you can hear Dakota talk about the Pachycephalosaurus uh, from the Lost World. So there's some fun details in there as well. So this is a great episode. Check it out. Uh, We have another episode coming up soon. Ooh, I got to get that one. Ooh, I got to inquire about that. We'll see. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, but I'll definitely mute it again when you return in December, Lewis. Absolutely will be on mute when that happens for sure. I'll definitely remember to do that. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, please, if you have not listened, which I, uh, you know, I know, you know, I don't know if you, you all are theme park fans or anything like that, but I also do another show uh, where I hopefully don't mute myself all that much. Um, but that one is called Grim Grinning Ghosts. Uh, no, that's not it. Grim Grinning Hosts. My bad. I, I'm, I've got Grim Grinning Ghosts on the mind too much. The song from the Haunted Mansion. But Grim Grinning Hosts, I know the name. It's right. It's right there in front of me. Uh, great show if you have not listened to it yet. But uh, we talked all about Halloween Horror Nights because uh, I finally had the chance to go check it out. And we gave our final review. Uh, we ranked all the houses and scare zones and stuff. Actually, we didn't rank the scare zones. But we ranked all the houses, got together, talked about it, and uh, had to justify some some interesting choices. So definitely check it out. That was a fun one. I really love that show. If you don't listen to that, you are missing out. Go listen to Grim Grinning Hosts. It's uh, it's a really fun show. But uh, also, please go, like I said, JurassicParkPodcast.com. Follow us on Twitter, at Jurassic Park Pod, at Jurassic Park Podcast on Instagram. Who cares about Facebook? Uh, and then you can also go to TikTok and search for the Jurassic Park Podcast. We are there as well. And please download the podcast because this is not a podcast. This is just a live stream. Go download the podcast on any of your favorite podcasting platforms or just on our website. You can find me on Twitter at Brad Jost. Find me. I talk sometimes on there. Not too much, but, you know, every now and then. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys next week again when I mute myself. Who cares about Facebook? You know, who cares? See you all next week. Bye, everybody.